In this tutorial, we're going to do a very basic overview of variables in Articulate Storyline. So we'll look at how variables work in this tutorial, and then we'll do three following tutorials where you can learn about each type of variable and how to use them in a course. So if you're not familiar with variables, variables are just a way for you to collect and store information, and then you can use that information in other ways in your course. And the one thing about variables is that they're universal to the course, so it doesn't matter what slide you're on, you can always use the value of that variable. Now when you think of variables, there's a few key things. So the first thing is that there are three types of variables. Text-based variables, numbers, or whether something's true or false, or a lot of people use on-off variables. So you can add text and collect the text information. You can add numbers and collect the number information, or you can determine whether something's true or false and use that information. Now when you're working with variables in Storyline, it's basically a three-step process. So the first step is you just need to create a variable, and then the second step is based on triggers. So you create a trigger that adjusts the value of the variable, and then you have another trigger that determines to do something based on the value of that. Let's look at this course and see how variables are being used, and then we'll open up the slides and look at variables in a little bit more detail. So if we look at this course here, this is a good example of a text-based variable. So in this case, I don't know what the person's going to put in here because I don't know what the person's name is. So there's just a variable called name that has no value. And the value is going to be changed when I add my name. So I'm going to add Tom in here. Now because I added my name in here, when I click on a slide, if I want to use that variable, I can customize it. And you know, you can see I, I've got my name in here now. Now if I go back, I can type in Sally and hit Submit. And you can see when I come back to the slide, the variable's values change. So what's being displayed is going to be based on that current value. So a variable just holds some information, and I can use that information somewhere else. So that's a good use of a text-based variable. Now if we look at this slide here, this is an example of a numbers-based variable. So what happens is I've got this drag-and-drop interaction. When I drag a food item to the plate, it's going to change the state of that to drop correct. So that means that this is the correct drop target. If I drag it away, it's going to change it back to normal state. Because that's happening, I can use a variable to add up my calories. So for example, when I drop this here and I hit Submit, you can see that's going to tell me there's 120 calories. So what happened is I had a variable that's called calories that has no value. And then I have a trigger that says if this is dropped on this target and it's state is set to drop correct, then add 120 points. If I drag it away and hit Submit, there's no longer a drop correct state on this, so it's zero. If I drag this here, it's going to add 103. If I drag this here, it's going to add 120 to that. So you can see this is an example of where I'm using numbers and I can add those and I can create something a little bit more dynamic or complex in my learning experience. So that's a good example of a numbers variable. And then here's a good example. If we look at the menu, you'll notice right now the tabs have this green rollover state and there's just this regular normal state on the tab. When I click on this tab, it's going to take me to a series of slides. When I come back to this main menu, I want to indicate that you've already visited those slides. So what I have to do is use a variable. In that case, I'm using a true-false variable. So what I have is a variable that might say, is that section visited? So it could be a section visited variable. It's going to be set at false. So when I click on this, and I'm leaving that, and I come here, and then I'm done, there's going to be a trigger here that says, change that variable from false to true, and then when I come back to the menu, it's going to evaluate the value of that variable, which is now true, and it's going to change the state. So there's a trigger on here that says change the state of this tab to this heart shape if this variable is equal to true. 
we looked at uh, text-based variable, we looked at number-based variable, and we looked at true-false variables. Now let's look at what we can do with variables at the slide level. When you're at the slide level and you go to the triggers column, you'll notice this little variables property box. So you can click on that and that'll show you all the variables that you have in your course. Now this will be a list of names. This will be the type of variable, the default or starting value, and then how where it's being used. And you can see there's all sorts of variables in this course. So we've got some number variables, we've got text-based variables, we've got some true-false variables. So a lot of ways that you can use it. If you want to create a variable, just click on create a new variable. You can add whatever title you want. The key here is to make sure you add a title that makes sense to you. And then you can choose the type of variable. Do you want it to be a true-false variable, a text-based variable, or a number variable? And then you can determine if you want a starting value or not. So it really doesn't matter. It's just going to be based on what your needs are. If you want to edit a variable, we'll just come over to this one. If I want to edit the variable, I can click on it. I can't change the type of variable because it's being used. But I can change the name and I can change the starting value for it. And then I can copy variables and then I can paste them. So if I have variables that are going to be the same, I just need to rename them or something like that. And then of course I can delete the variable. Now let's look at one of the slides just to see how it works. Remember, variables are always based on three things. Create the variable and then have a trigger that changes the value of the variable and then another trigger that will do something based on the value. So if we look at this menu, for example, this menu is based on me clicking on a tab, going out to a few slides, and coming back. When I come back and if I've completed a task, I want to change the state of this tab to visit it. So if we look at the tab, you'll notice there's a finished tab here. And this finished tab is what we want to display, but only if you went to the slides that these were connected to. So if we look at Story View, we can see here's the main menu. And this first tab should go to the Why Wellness slide. And then it should go to the Interactive Graphics slide. And then it should come right back to the main menu. So once I've completed this section, I want to indicate that as a visited or finished section. Let's assume I clicked on the tab, I come here, and now we can see on the trigger panels there's just regular triggers. I go to the second slide which should complete visiting that section, and you'll see there's a trigger here. Set section 1 Y Wellness equal to true. So initially it was set at false. There's a trigger that's going to set it to true. When I come back to this slide, you can see that I have a state change. It says change the state of that tab to finished when the timeline starts and if that variable is equal to true. So if it's equal to false, it'll always be in that normal state. But once that variable is equal to true, I can evaluate that and I can change the way the tab looks. So then I go from this normal tab here to a finished tab because I can evaluate what you did based on using that variable. Probably sounds a little complicated. It's okay when you do the practice activities in the following tutorials. It will all start to make sense. The key point is you have three types of variables, text, number, and true-false. And they can be interchangeable, so there's no right or wrong way to use them. And then the other thing is you have two triggers. One trigger will always adjust the value of the variable. And another trigger can use that value of the variable to do something else. Do the three practice activities that follow this tutorial, and that will give you a really good basic overview of how to create and use those types of variables. And then it's just a matter of finding a reason why you need to use the variable and then applying that to your next e-learning course.